Welcome to the Northern Powerhouse interview series, where we're unashamedly spreading good news by interviewing Northern businesses and their successes during the pandemic. Subscribe to be notified of new interviews or click the link in the description to take part if you'd like to be interviewed yourself in a future episode. Great. Well, this morning on Northern Powerhouse's Business Success Stories, we've got John Redman of Modo 25, who's going to talk to us about his experiences uh, coming through uh, the COVID outbreak, lockdown, etc., coming out of the side and, and what the future looks like. So thanks for taking the time to, to, to join us this morning, John. If you'd like to introduce it to the audience about who you are, what your business does and how you help people, that would be a great start. Well, first of all, Chris, thanks for, for having me on. Uh, I'm uh, the CEO and founder of Modo25. Uh, we are a digital marketing, in-housing and technology business. And we help people, uh, brands and, and specifically retailers, but anybody really who, who wants to make more money from their digital marketing. And we're also a software business. And we've built some software called Ask Bosco, where it enables brands to benchmark themselves in an index against their competitors. And it helps them then plan where to spend their money, predict how it's going to get their return, and then ultimately help them profit in the future. And we've actually built all that software and carried on investing in that software during lockdown, whereas a lot of people might have stopped uh, and that's, um, that's sort of all, all done in Yorkshire. So we're very proud of, of, of what we've been getting up to during lockdown. That's fantastic. I'm really fantastic. You know, I look, look forward to, to learning a little bit more about, more about that. And I guess, you know, working with retail, obviously it's a challenge right now, but so many retails are A, going online and B, therefore, I would imagine, are so much more interested in, in, in digital marketing and how that can drive their sales over the next couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, some of our clients, uh, I suppose, have, have, have well, we had a lot of travel clients, and they struggled, and they just stopped spending. So we we did lose two thirds of our clients at the beginning of lockdown. But then we've got other clients such as uh, gardening, home decoration. Um, who've really, really benefited from people actually not going on holiday, having a few quid in their pocket and wanting to improve their house or their garden. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a game of two halves, really. Brilliant. Brilliant. I was, I was told not that long ago, actually, that, that Walls, that when we talk about the brand Walls, and they said, well, what do they tell them? Um, somebody said, well, you know, it's, it, if you ask somebody who will, will, will sell, they either tell you sausages or ice cream. And they're the two things. And I couldn't work out why that didn't make sense. But of course, primarily, um, ice cream in the summer and sausages in the winter. And it just sort of works. It's like, it doesn't matter where we are. We're <laughs> yeah, always selling yeah. something. And I never thought about it till recently. But uh, that, that's, uh, that's wonderful. So looking back over the last eight or nine months, um, what, 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 how has the COVID outbreak affected you specifically? Uh, so as a business, well, as a family, it was, it was good and bad. Two sort of early teenage daughters... Uh, getting locked down, home education, uh, my wife and I trying to work around the kitchen table, that was that was good fun, and a young dog, uh, all on top of it. So, um, But no, as a business, initially, the first month and a bit was really tricky. And we, because, and, and I suppose to put it into context now, Chris, we've, we've been running our business, Danny launched the business last September proper, so we've been running it in this new COVID world longer than we have in the old world. So, um, so this is now normal. It's not new normal. It's normal normal. Uh, so we initially it was really hard. We lost two thirds of our clients, stopped spending on advertising, and it was very tricky. And then after a while, I, I, I just decided, well, we've got to just get back on it and just get on with. Uh, and actually find the clients who want to expand and have got propositions that are going to benefit from people being locked at home. So we did a lot of work with um, an exceptional business called Low Cost Glasses, so all the opticians were closed. So they were selling prescription glasses online. So we helped them massively disrupt a market, uh, and now they're one of the most biggest online prescription glasses companies out there. Uh, and again, that probably wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this. And then companies um, like UK Bathrooms, uh, they, they just can't literally, they need a new warehouse. It's another great Yorkshire-based business up in Ripon. They need a new warehouse because so many people are getting new bathrooms. And I think it's people have not, they've, got, they've not gone on holiday and they want to think, well, I'll spend it on my house. 
we, we think there's a lot of that going on. But we had to furlough a couple of members of the team to start with. And then very quickly, as we started focusing on webinars, focusing on uh, driving our sales pipeline forward, uh, we quickly got more new clients on board. We could get the guys back off furlough. Uh, and then since then, we've recruited four new members of the team during lockdown. So, um, yeah, so we're growing, we're expanding, we're signing up new clients, and... Uh, we're very positive about the future. So we've actually got another new starter starting on Monday and we've just offered two more roles for people to start in January. So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very positive. And I think 2021, uh, certainly in the digital sector, is, um, is going to be very buoyant and uh, positive. Um, because you, you've, and, and I suppose you've got to look at it. You've got to look at it in that way. You can't... You, uh, there's a lot of people going, well, by the time they've spent enough time worrying about it, they've missed the bus. So um, we're not planning on missing the bus. Perfect. No, I, I, what great news to hear about, about, about recruitment, you know, that, that you're recruiting in the middle of, of, of the challenges. And bang on. And so it's really great to, doing these sessions with people. So many of the people interviewed are doing the same and seeing it as an opportunity. I, I, I guess the... Um, the Referring back to referencing someone like Warren Buffett, the, the world's great investor, you know, he always, he always talks about being fearful when other people are bold and bold when other people are fearful. And that, you know, that, that was his big, in, you know, one of his investment strategies. And I think it's true in, in marketing and growing is when, other, if, you know, we should be growing because other people aren't. And so we're yeah. there to fill that space. Um, so, oh, that's wonderful. So I was going to ask you what adaptations you've made, but obviously you're, you're almost bored in this whole well, thing. Well, I think the big... The one big thing we did is, um, so I'm in the office today. I've started coming back in for certain things like this, and I've got a big presentations this afternoon as well because uh, the internet's better here than at home. But it's um, we, we downscaled our office. We were already set up for full flexible working. We actually, um, famously, when I launched the business, we pay London money in, in Leeds. We get pay them a full-time salary, and they work four days a week. So that was all a bit like hoo-ha when I first launched the business. Um, initially, at the beginning of lockdown, when it was like panic, I sort of said, right, guys, I might need you to work that extra fifth day. Everybody said, right, we'll do whatever it takes. We've got to get through this. Uh, and actually, last month, everybody's back to their four days. There's, we're not forcing, we're not encouraging people to work the full week. Um, and I've got this view about efficiency and about lifestyle and about, um, I think, in a lot of businesses, you get this attendeeism where actually people are just there. They're not actually doing anything. They're just there. So we've got this thing about when you're at work and you're working really effectively, doing a great job for your client, but also if you can get the work done in four days, um, then you can have the fifth day off. But if you can't get the work done, well, you actually, I've said I expect you to do the work. And everybody's bought into that and it worked. If you imagine the way, the, the, the analogy I often use, Chris, is if you imagine the week before you go on holiday, you get so much more done, right? Nobody's giving you any extra time. You just, you're a bit more focused. So why can't we be a little bit more focused? And we actually, we use a neuroscientist and he works with the team on a one-to-one -one basis to make their brains more efficient. Sorry, repeat that. I'm, I'm... Yeah, no, no, so I've got, I've, I've, em, em, I've employed the, 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 the skills of a chap called Dr. John Finn, who's a, who's a neuroscientist to work individually with the team to create better habits so they can be more efficient. So A, so they can be more efficient in their life and healthier and happier, but B, so they can be more efficient with the four days they've got. So none of our clients can turn around and go, well, you guys, you're the guys who only do four days a week. And I'm like, yeah, but our four days are as valuable as everybody else's five or six days because we're, we're, we're thinking about it better. And then everybody's happier as well, hopefully. So that's gone down pretty well so far. And when you're dealing, we're very data and analytics. When you've got loads of, smart people, I couldn't get in somebody who might be sort of a yeehaw motivation guy from America. So I said, right, I'll go get a neuroscience and we'll get somebody who really understands how the brain works and they can talk to all these super clever maths guys about actually, this is how your brain works and this is how you're going to get the most out of your brain. And it's gone down really well. Wonderful. What a great, I, I've never heard of that specifically. I've been sick, great. Um, but, you know, investment delivers return investing people oh no no it doesn't also we switched it up a bit to focus on how to get the best out of yourself whilst working at home remotely 
because he then said, right, this is what your brain will be going on in your head. And, and we, yeah, so we do a one session once a, a month as a group with him. And then everybody has an individual hour with him every month. So anyway, but yeah, so I suppose that's something we've changed slightly. Uh, but we accelerated that because I thought it was important. What? Amazing. Um, just just brilliant. Um, so what, 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 what are the biggest issues you've had to overcome with this situation? I'm guessing, obviously, you said one, one of the key sets you worked in was... Well, yeah, so well, well, the, well, my business partner and investor was um, uh, a guy called, it is a guy called Bonnie Grimes, and he was one of the founders of Skyscanner. So we went out with his name going, right, let's go and get travel. Right, let's, it's easy, Skyscanner. We're, we, we're, we, we're backed by the clever guys of Skyscanner. Um, and that was a bit of a disaster. So we've now had to diversify our portfolio of clients and our targets and our strategy um, and I suppose the other big thing, which I, I've always had this view um, about business, is if you build it and you go the right process and systems and this and the other, it will, it will, it will, and it, and it always has. And I've been very fortunate. But I think one thing in lockdown is most of our business has come through word of mouth or friends of friends, uh, because suddenly in this catastrophe or disaster or whatever you want to call it everybody's a bit more like well is it going to work do you trust them do you know them and it's been it's been a bit of that so uh i analyzed all the new business we've not all of it most of the new business we've won in the last few months uh, it's either a personal contact a friend of a friend or somebody we know through somebody or another client's recommended us so um yeah, I think that's. I think that in itself is has been very interesting. Um, but we haven't had to adapt to much else. Um, we did downsize our office a bit to try and save the rent. Um, and our landlord, the office group above the station in Leeds, were very good, very flexible, very helpful actually. Uh, um, and because of that, we'll we'll grow back when when or if when or if we come back to the office. Who knows? It's eleven thirty. We find out, don't we? Uh, what we're doing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but it's um, yeah. I, I think um, I think if anything, it, it's going to force all businesses to to be more flexible with their team, and it's proved that you can learn. Let's take, for instance, law. Right? Historically, lawyers were like, "Oh, we've got to be in the office. We've got to do the networking. We've got to do this. We've got to do that." And now you've got m massive law firms with hundreds of staff all working from home, and they're still getting the work done. So I think it's going to be very exciting um, coming out of this, of how work works. I don't have the answer, but I'm going to be watching with interest uh, and we're going to try and learn as much as we can to, to do it as best we can. Yeah, and I think it's, you know, for, for me, you know, it's that adaptability, isn't it? It's, it's looking to, to uh, maximise the, 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 the benefits of the changes and, and adapt to the things that, that are challenging. Is, is going to be um, the market success of many businesses. Is I, I my favourite my favourite quote at the moment, funny enough, Lady Aids, who yesterday had a picture of Darwin behind him, which I, I recognised. And he, he he's got a quote for the origin of species, which is it's not the strongest or the most intelligent of the species that survive, but the ones that are most adaptable to change. And yeah. I just think that is just where we are right now. And it's people like ourselves that are just saying, right, okay, how do we adapt? What do we do? That are, that are taking action that are going, they're going to win what is potentially a really great opportunity right now. As, as, as uh, yeah, I think, yeah, and there's going to there's we, there's already casualties. You only have to walk around Leeds and the shops closed. I saw some pubs down the road and they're actually um, this morning when I was coming in, and they've actually boarded up the windows. So I don't know why or what they've been having problems, but um, yeah, the, it, but I think in all of these things there's normally a bounce back and it normally goes higher back up. So it's just, well, what are the opportunities in yeah. there? And, and I suppose our business is in the business of helping other people grow their business. So yeah. we've just got to find the right businesses that want to grow. So we tend to try and work with Chris, people, businesses that are privately owned, so I can go meet the owner and we can have yeah. a frank face-to-face -face conversation that want to scale, or businesses that recently attracted private equity or, or funding to grow. Because then they're really, they've got a specific set of numbers, a specific target, and they've got the funds to grow. Um, we tend to avoid the big political beasts, and we're not one of these client, We're not one of these digital firms who wants to work with the big Tesco's of the world, because it's just more hassle than it's worth, in my opinion. Yeah, it makes makes perfect sense. Makes perfect sense. 
So um, you mentioned a few wins. I mean, obviously, you've been recruitment. What, what are the key wins that you're most proud of over the last nine months? So uh, most proud of... Uh, I'm looking at them on the wall over there. All the different we have all our client logos on the wall. Um, I'd say uh, one of the one of the most interesting ones is the one I mentioned before, UK Bathrooms, which is another Yorkshire business uh, run by Graham up in um, in Ripon. And he, he we had a really awkward conversation the other day. He goes, "Can you just turn it down a bit? Because you're selling too much." <laughs> so um, so that's that's good and bad because he's got like. The warehouse needs a bigger warehouse needs so that's that's a great story and we've formed a really good partnership with those guys uh, and, and we're very pleased uh, with what we've done there and then I, I suppose um, uh, there's another there's a, another Yorkshire business uh, Paver Shoes uh, in York uh, who, yes. own, who are also in Jones the Bootmakers uh, they've had a they've had a they've got hundreds of stores. Right, so that's real, and what we've managed to help them do is, and obviously they've bought container loads of stock, and they've got their own factories making shoes and this, that, and the other. So we've 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 been working closely with those guys to really ramp up uh, their digital presence uh, to supplement what they do with their home shopping already. Uh, and they're I can't show any numbers, but they're having a, a year on year a very good year in the digital space, considering everything that's going on. And I suppose it may be, if they hadn't had this forced upon them, would they have invested so much in digital? And would they have been so open to it? So, so they've, they've been a great client to work with. And they've also embraced our philosophy, which is I think actually all of this is best done in-house. So we actually help these brands learn how to do it. We help them recruit the people, train the people and move it in-house. And then we, we use our technologies to support them. Whereas a lot of agencies have this sort of black box mentality going back, well, we're, we've got this clever secret source and we're not going to tell you what we're doing or, or how we're doing it. So, um, yeah, I'd say they're the two significant ones. Uh, I feel like I need to run to all our clients now because <laughs> if, any of them are, if any of them are watching, they're going to go, well, we didn't mention us. The other one that's a really worthy of note um, is a bike website that sells bikes called Sigma Sports. And they've reforecast their sales about five times this year already uh, because they just can't sell enough bikes. There's just so many bikes. They nearly ran out of bikes. Um, and a lot of that is people wanted to get out and do exercise. And in lockdown, cycling was one of the only things you could do. Yeah. Um, and every, a lot of people wanted to. So that's a business called Sigma Sports. Um, and that's, so again, privately owned. We know the owner. We've worked as a really good sort of team to support those guys as they've scaled um, their business. And Anna, what's interesting is normally around this time of year, it drops off. Yes. Cycling, but it's, yep. doesn't, it doesn't seem to be. Uh, it, a lot of the summer cyclists are now buying the winter gear. So a lot of people who are new to cycling have actually started in, investing in the, in the proper winter gear. So uh, that's also very interesting. So, but... But yeah, we've, we've kind of got 16 clients and our, our, our business plan and growth plan on the in-housing agency side is to try and sign up two, three new clients a month. And then we just launched the software. So I suppose our biggest achievement is probably launching the software called askbosco.io. And the idea of that is that to be a pure software as a service where people go online, sign up for the free trial for 30 days, hopefully they like it, then they give us some money on a monthly basis. And then hopefully it becomes like um, Silicon Valley above Leeds Station. That's, that's, that's the idea. Can't wait. That sounds, sounds brilliant. I, I, you know, it, it's just great. It, 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 it's great to, to have the clarity of thought that you have because, you know, as I say, I think a lot of people at the moment are lacking that because, because of the unsurety. And unsurety, uh, the lack of surety typically causes concern and fear. Understandably, but not, it doesn't actually help us actually get that clarity to grow, make a plan. And, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, the chance of saying that the, the economy had shrunk 80, yeah, by 11%, which is a massive amount, but it does still mean that 89% of the economy is still running. So, yeah. you know, and, and most of us in, in small businesses are only addressing probably less than 1% of that. So the ability to grow in a recession is still there. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, and I think if you, as you said before, because if you've got the right attitude and you come at it with the right approach, there are opportunities out there. Yeah, you've just maybe got to look a little bit harder. 
Well, there's a guy called a, a guy who worked for Walt Disney, who's, who I, I think founded his business in the middle of, of a recession many years ago, and, and I think his quote was, um, uh, "I believe there's I've been told there's a recession, but I've decided not to participate." Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I, I actually think what's going to happen in the new year, and maybe this is uh, wrong, but I think there'll be a, a sort of temporary boom first. Once, uh, like this vaccine effect for three, yes. six months, consumer confidence, this, that, and the other, and then more towards the March, April, May time, probably May. I think it will hit. And yeah, you can't avoid the fact that's of what's happened, and also somebody's got to pay for it. But um, yeah, they're not going to suddenly start whacking up taxes in January, February time um, because they need us all to get out there and spend some money. I agree. I agree. And, and I think it, it's having that view to what we think is going to happen and, and acting accordingly. Uh, you know, is, is what's going to help people rather than you know, it's, it's understandable. We, we might put ahead in the stand because that's that is a natural reaction. For many people to fearful situations, but it's not going to help us. We know it logically, so it's 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 probably this is the time to engage in our logical minds rather than our emotional feelings, because um, that, that that is the logic that's going to get us through uh, any challenges we have. So goodness, what an exciting time! What, what, <laughs> it, it, it's just great. I just love I love doing this interview. What I mean, looking at what um, adjustments you have done or, or have to do with. What will you keep doing the other side of lockdown when we get to whatever is a new normal? Well, as I said, it's just normal for you, but what, what would uh, what would be a new normal? Um, I think I think the big the big thing for me. So I've spent the last fifteen years. I'm a proud Yorkshireman, uh, live in Yorkshire, born and bred in Yorkshire. But I've always spent for the last fifteen years two days in London, always every week. So I'd travel down on a Wednesday, normally do a series of meetings, some sort of networking deal or dinner on a Wednesday night. Series of meetings Thursday, train home Thursday night. And I've done that religiously for the last 15 years. I won't be doing that again. I might do one week a month, but I just don't think the requirement for the face-to-face -face meetings is, is the, it's a shame because those, well, I might do, but I don't, I don't know what, I suppose. That's the one thing I, I can see I won't go back to straight away. But there's something I was talking to a friend of mine at KPMG and he's just a professional luncher. He do, that's how he does his business. And his whole life's changed because they go around and, and have lunches and, and talk to clients and understand stuff that wouldn't have maybe come out in a meeting or Zoom. The bit that I do miss is when you're in at an event and someone else goes, oh, you've got to meet such and such. Or you've got to meet... Because you don't get those serendipitous sort of random meetings with people that you end up doing business with because you're not in that environment or you're not walking down the corridor of a, an office where somebody introduces you to the CEO or someone introduces you to somebody else because it's very organised and, and, and structured online. That said, we'll probably spend less time on the train and we'll probably save some money, probably mean we can be more value for our clients because we're doing more of our meetings like this and we're not on the, on the ridiculously expensive train to London. So, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing that will carry on um, is that the, 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 the perceived reality or the perce perception that clients need you to be in their office for a meeting. I yes. think that, that will have gone away now. Uh, I think once a quarter for a big planning session and then a few beers is, is still a great idea. But I don't think every month you'll have to go uh, for your monthly meeting now. I think that's that will have changed. And that means we can now spend more time and more money focusing on our client to help them with optimization rather than using the money to pay for train fares. I, I, bang on, I, I completely agree. I, I think, you know, th th there's a, in every meeting, there's a feeling that there's a social element, which is a small part of it, but it is a social element. And, 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 but for most businesses, transacting work can be done as well as in, in oftentimes better with this environment, because obviously we can actually bring resources up with that we may not have brought with us, we can do so many things. But the social element is, is missing. But it means that for me, we can socialize with our clients without having to do the business bit as well. So probably oh, yeah. less frequent socialization, but more focus on socialization than a bit of socializing and then a meeting. And I, I, I personally feel that's actually gonna um, bring us closer to our clients because when we actually go to, to meet them socially it is just because we want to meet them socially and that's a cool thing to do um, yeah, we, we also um, which I, I don't think it's naughty but it was creative I, 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 I spoke to the 
a lawyer about the rules uh, with like lockdown. I spoke to loads of different people. Uh, we've got this event planned around the launch of the software in the summer. Um, and we were going to call it Modo Fest. And we were going to have a we were going to have a big company presentation, review 12 months we've been running the business, review everything, um, talk about the product, talk about the launch, get everybody over. So get everybody, we've got a development office in Prague. So get the guys over from Prague, and we're then gonna have a big barbecue in my garden and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, well, can I do this or not? It's sort of it wasn't this was August time, so it wasn't mega height of lockdown, but you weren't meant to have more than eight people or two families or something. Yeah. Uh, and then I took some legal counsel because uh, I still wanted to do it and I wanted to do it in a COVID safe way. And I wanted to, because um, I thought it was important for the company, important for motivation. We've all been working hard on this thing and we need to talk about it. And it'd be good to see people. There's people who joined the company who'd never met anybody. Right, so we'd recruited them. I'd met them for coffee, but they'd never met anybody else, and they're working on projects, and they don't—they've never seen each other in the same room. So that's weird, right? Um, so we organised a COVID-safe offsite day at Bowcliff Hall in Bramham, and to be fair to Jonathan and the team there, they were fantastic. It was all really well organised, loads of space, very airy, and then we had a, a COVID-safe Modo Fest barbecue in my garden. Uh, that's confined with all the, the, boot, the rules and everything and regulations. We all be all sat outside freezing. We had a lot of fire pits going. Um, but yeah, we didn't know they came in the house. We did let them go in the house to go to the toilet. Um, but they had to go right in the front door, right where the toilet is. Uh, but, the, um, but then the other thing I'm doing, which some people think is a bit irresponsible and a bit controversial, is I'm going to do a similar thing for Christmas. Right, so a lot of people you talk to, Christmas is cancelled. We're giving the Christmas party budget to charity. Oh, we're doing this, we're doing that. And I'm like, well, I think it's really important to get the team together, right? Especially because we've got quite a young team that are on the projection in their career. And I think it is important. I think it is important. The energy you can give across in a face-to-face -face meeting versus a Zoom it's just, you can't quite get the energy down the internet in the same way you can in a room. So what we've done with, with the Ark, I don't know if you know Ark Inspiration, the, they own Banyan and they own the Ark and they own the Box. So we've, I approached those guys at the Box um, and said, what are you doing? Can, can we have a business meeting? And the rules on business meetings, as long as it's social distance and COVID safe and this like that, you can have a business meeting in a private space um, so we're going to do a Christmas business meeting update um, and we're going to have turkey and a few bottles of wine but then we are going to all go home and we're not going to flood out into Leeds and cause ourselves a problem but um, I do think that it's important for mental health I think it's important for the team and because um, one of my some of my developers have been sad I don't think they've left the house for three months yeah yeah. So it's. I think it's. 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 Um, yeah, we've got to. We've got to get them out. I like that. Thank you. I'll. Uh, I'll be looking into that. That's brilliant. A business yeah. meeting. Business meeting. Private space. That, I think that would be wonderful. So uh, yeah. we'll. We'll. We'll, uh, we'll. We'll look into that ourselves. Actually, that'd be. Really yeah, that'd be I'll have the police turning up next. Go. Can you stop spreading the, Spreading these up. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll keep it quiet. Hey, yeah. Okay. So then you and I at the moment. So that's. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, Look, you know, looking into the future when, when we get back to some form of normal, whatever that looks like, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, as a personally, family holidays, yeah. yeah, getting away on a nice family holiday, uh, a proper decent, either nice family ski holiday or family summer holiday or something, uh, where you're not worried about stuff. I think, um, that, that I'm really looking forward to that, and I suppose. A, a bit of getting into that routine of being able to confidently book stuff, right? Being able to book that, like, let's book the tickets for the football or let's book the tickets for the rugby or whatever it is, being able to have some certainty and plan, right? Because um, at the moment, we're, we're all, everybody talks about agile business or agile development or whatever, but everything is like, well, there's no point in booking anything. Well, there's no point in booking anything for next week because we don't know what's happening at 11.30. So it's... <laughs> Uh, so it's I, I think it's an element of certainty so we can plan and then we, once the plan's in place we can accelerate I think our growth I think um, 
Um, because there's events and things we were meant to be going to in America uh, to launch the software over in America. And we've, had, we've just had, can't go, had to cancel while the events didn't happen. So it's not the same. We've tried, we've tried to do some of this networking events and launch events on this, and it's just not the same. Yeah. There's an element, isn't there? It's, it's just that you, there's something missing with that. You know, yeah. I guess they, you know, I guess it's maybe the 80 20 rule, you get 80% of the value, but don't get. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think going forward, what is absolutely, we're not all suddenly going to go back to face to face in events, right? That's not going to happen, right? Uh, but we're certainly not all, everything going to stay on this, right? Yeah. There will be a mix, and it, but it will be really interesting. One thing, another big benefit I'm pleased with all this is I tried to get an appointment with the doctors. I don't have COVID, by the way, I just tried to get an appointment with the doctors. And I just ended up using the system. Which the doctor phoned me back, spoke to me on the phone, talked to me through everything, all on some online system within like 10 minutes. That wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this. Yeah. And it was just, it was brilliant. So yeah. it has yeah. accelerated systems and development and, and loads of stuff. So. For sure. Absolutely sure. And, and, and the way people think, because of that, the way people think as well. So, you know, the, the, the comfort with, Doing meetings online, yeah, you know, there's always a benefit in face to face. But the, the rule of thumb that yeah, let's meet online unless we have an absolute need or reason to meet but physically, it's making it all so much more efficient, isn't it? I mean, I think the funny the funny one was though, Chris, the first time we had our first, I did a, like an exploratory call with someone online, had never met them face to face. We then did the big pitch with the whole team online, never met them face to face. They've now been a client for six months. We've still never met them. And and it's and then that's great, but it, the first time that happened, it was a bit weird. And now it's completely normal. I was trying to work out with the team, is it okay to do cold calling with a video call? Or is that really intrusive? Oh, cold calling video call, interesting. So you can, you can WhatsApp call someone if you've got the mobile with a video call. Yeah, interesting. We might test a measure that, we might try it ourselves. Because it well, we have, what we have been doing, which has worked actually, is recording video messages and sending them to people. Because yes. people do seem to absorb video more now than people just don't read email. People just don't just delete. Think how many emails you've deleted to don't even read it. So we're yep. trying to think of innovative and different ways to communicate with clients and potential clients. And I think video is going to be a real part of that. We we if it's useful we um, we've trial we're trialing a embedded video service so it, it's literally it, it streams straight into so most, most video it's a link that you have to click and oh right through. okay that but sounds cool what, what's that it's called um, bomb bomb two two words I've, 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 I just realised I shouldn't have said that online because I spent the CIA listening to it just like clicked on but it's <laughs> bomb, bomb, bomb. <laughs> Literally, two bob, bob, bob. but it's, it, it, it's you know as a technology that that's the uniqueness is is that it appears on as as I open the email the video will start rather than a click a click through so please if that's useful have a look at that because um, yeah that sounds interesting that sounds yeah very, very interesting yeah it, it, it is that difference that that's the point of it. there is also another company we're looking at um, which I'll say if it's useful that actually it's a holographic image that will appear on your phone so. If you imagine a person appearing, you know, you click on it. You, not till you click on it, obviously, but uh, once you clicked on it. I want the one that gets me out of the phone, so I'm stood on top of the phone. Well, we want the Star Wars thing, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's funny you talking about what you just said about online. I mean, we, we've engaged, as I think you have, uh, clients that we've never met physically uh, over this period. But I remember one we'd engaged, we'd worked with him for three or four months, and he came in. He said, could I come in and just see it? That, that was actually fine. And I literally said to him, you look when you know you, you're way bigger than you look on in effects on TV, and I just realised I said that to him, and it was so funny because it did. It was a big bloke, and it, it, just, yeah. it just looks like a small bloke. Well, no, normally, normally, um, people look bigger on the screen than they do in real life. Yeah, yeah. No, it was just I just had this image of him so, somehow. I, I, I don't know why, but that he was smaller than he was, but he was you know six foot something. And I mean, everyone's big to me. I'm only five foot seven, but it's uh, it's uh, everyone's big. Um, Cool. Well, look, one thing, um, interesting, what, 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 what have you learned about yourself over this period as a leader and as a... As a oh, leader? well, that's... Uh, that, yeah, we could have a whole session on that. Um, what is interesting is I think I've worked the hardest I've ever worked. And I, I've, I've always worked hard, right? I'm a no-slouch, I'm a grafter. 
And I think there's this mentality of, right, I've been put in this trench and I've got to fight my way out of it. So I'm getting up earlier, I'm exercising harder, I'm eating better, uh, and I'm probably more focused than I've ever been. Um, but I don't know if that's also because we started the business and it's like, well, I've got to make it survive. So no, I, think, I don't know what the stats are, but some stat, most startups don't make it past the first year. So we've survived. So that's good. Yeah. Um, so, but it, it's, yeah, so I'm definitely working harder. Um, what I have also been very conscious of, though, is not working in the evenings. So I tend to get up yeah. super early, work in the mornings, because that's sort of uninterrupted time. No one else is up. No one's asking you questions. And also the kids aren't up. The family's not up. Um, so that's, that's what I tend to do. Um, what else have I learned about myself? Uh, I like, I've been going through phases of trying not to drink too much in the week. So at the beginning of lockdown, the first lockdown, I was, I was put, I, I was, I should have bought shares in Virgin Wine. Um, yeah, that wasn't good. Uh, so now I've, I've, I've learned that actually you don't need to drink a bottle of wine every night. That's not compulsory. Um, but yeah, and I, and I think, um, and, and I think it is, if you can do business remotely with people and you can work out and you can recruit people remotely and uh, you can still ask great questions and you can still operate your business. Uh, things, ha things are different and you have to change and you have to adapt. But uh, if you've got a good proposition and you believe in what you're doing, you, nothing should be stopping you doing it. And I think that's the other thing is we you can get back to business it's different, but you, there's nothing, you, you've still got a service that people want. And as long as you still believe that, it's just maybe a different way that we're delivering that service. Brilliant. Brilliant. No, very wise words. Uh, and, and, uh, I think that's the key thing, isn't it? We can do so much more from where we are. Um, and, and yeah, and, and we've cut out, and I think that's the key thing. We, we are cutting out efficiencies. And you, it's funny you say about working hard. I mean, I'm, I'm the same, I've worked hard on that for, for many, many years. Um, to a point where I had to take your break because literally, it, instead of having, say, let's say four meetings a day interspersed with driving, oh. you, you, you know, you can do eight or nine back to back. I know, you have this, I look to my diary, so, well, I'm doing this um, thing with the team about efficiencies and working on your brain. And yes. my thing last week was, I'm consciously going to plan time to plan my time, right? Yeah. That sounds weird. But I'm putting, so that I'm stopping to reflect on what is actually a good use of my time, and then I'm just cancelling things out of my diary. Yeah. And just, and actually, and then I'm planning time to go for a walk with the dog at lunchtime, and I'm planning because yeah. otherwise everybody just thinks, well, they're sat at home. I just put that meeting in. Yeah. Right? And um, yeah, so I have had those awful days or interesting days where you suddenly sit down and it's eight o'clock in the morning, and you realise because we've also got an office in Melbourne in Australia, so we've got guys, so I, I can be online from five, six in the morning, yeah. easily, through to six at night. And I've had days where it's back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. And you just think, well, that can't be good. No. That's good for nobody. And you're not going to be efficient with it. You're going to be sort of average all day, aren't you, like that? Yeah, and, 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 and all fall in the heat after a number of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Then the wine comes in, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we'll let you out the bit where you say you don't have to be good, you know. Just, yeah, just, this is coffee. Fun. Honestly, this is coffee. This <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So just a couple of things. I guess the, 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 maybe the challenges and, and the positive. What, what, if any, do you see as the challenges moving forward as you grow? Uh, biggest challenge with any growing business is people. Right, it's yeah, got to be right. people, right? So, um, and one of the reasons we've spent so much time and effort on creating a compelling story around the four-day week, the London salary in Leeds, working with some of the smartest people in the industry. That only gets you so far with recruiting people. Uh, the other bit, which we haven't talked about, Modo, uh, the business is actually named after a nine-year-old orphan in Uganda. So Modo 25, it's a Modo is a girl in this orphanage in Ginger. Uh, we've named the business after her. Uh, 25 comes from my cycle. I've also got cycling adventure travel business that's a separate conversation at the time. And that's called ride 25 so i just thought well i couldn't get modo.com so i called modo 25 because it's just, i'm going to just be calling john 25 at some point so um but anyway so we named the company after this girl in in uh the orphanage and then we've named the software 
after the guy who, Bosco, who runs the orphanage. So he provides the vision and direction for Modo. And then we've also got um, my longer term vision, Chris, is, well, why can't we do, build an office in Ginger? So we're hoping these kids get an education and, and get on with their life. But why can't we in the future actually create a job for them? And then also create jobs for people from Leeds to fly out for a year out to Uganda to, to educate and train these guys on how to do a job. So that's the sort of longer term vision. And what's interesting and why that's relevant is we've attracted some really smart people who were highly paid, who worked at some top businesses who came to work with us because they want to work with a company with a purpose. Brilliant. Right? It's not just about the money. It's not about the four-day week. It's about actually we stand for something that isn't just trying to make the shareholders money. And I think nowadays you've got to think a little bit more about, especially as we're getting a bit more wise about trying to look after the planet, trying to look after ourselves, trying to look after each other. I think if you're a modern business... And it's not just about changing your logo or doing this and giving it lip service. It's got to be core to what you do. So, uh, yeah, so I, mean, I should have said that at the beginning, probably. If anybody's got this far, hopefully they'll, they'll find that interesting. That's, that's wonderful and fascinating. And look, I, just as an aside, if we can help you in, in, in any way, shape or form, we'd love to do that. And yeah. 100% purpose, um, one of the things we've found is, um, I've, I've always found um, you know, purpose and values are, are the most important thing in a business. Get clarity on those. You attract all the all the people you need, both team and clients, yeah. who want to come on board with the journey. So that's a wonderful story. So uh, thank you for explaining that because that's <laughs> cool. but, um, well, uh, yeah, no, that, that that that's wonderful. So j- j- just finally, then, what what? How do you see the future? What's the future hold for for Moda Twenty five. Uh, I think. Um... Well, we want to continue to grow. We want to accelerate the growth. And the biggest, the agency will keep growing. We don't want to get too big because ultimately if we're too big, it means we're not actually fulfilling our promise of in-housing our clients. I don't want to become another big Leeds digital agency, right? We want to be a perfectly formed uh, team of, of really smart practitioners. And then the software business, however, that's a, that's a different kettle of fish. Hopefully that um, people go online, sign up, uh, buy their licenses and um, we, we grow that software team uh, globally um, and it becomes Leeds, another unicorn from Leeds I wasn't going to say the first unicorn but I think Skybet probably uh, would um, like to claim yeah. that I don't, I don't know if they, do they count are they a technology business yet? now I suppose it's only valued over a billion isn't it um, yeah, so I'm sure Richard Flint would claim he was the first Leeds unicorn there's plenty of room for many yeah, so I don't know, maybe that's a little bit ambitious, but I think the future is definitely positive. Digital is, and digital marketing is growing. I think there's also an appetite for businesses to want to take control in-house. They need yes. better tech to do that. So, um, yeah, I'm very positive. Even I almost think our business particularly is going to benefit more than if this hadn't happened. I think I think we'd have probably had to convince people that in-house and digital was was accelerating this space, but they've just had to do it now. Yeah, I, so. I, 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 I agree with you, but I, but I also say feeling like that is the best way to you know that mindset is the one that's going to drive you forward too. So it, it's and I often find like make make I was saying to people you know I've always said make a decision make it the right way I think you're right and now it's just about making that right so what an opportunity if you take a view that it's an opportunity rather than a challenge you know where, how much further forward are we going to be by viewing it as the opportunity than the yeah, challenge yeah yeah houses well well John that is absolutely fantastic thank you so much for spending so much time with us because that's um, no, I, I really I, enjoyed I, that. I, I could talk more for hours. Perhaps we should arrange another session to do so. Well, no, let's do it over a beer sometime. Let's get out and, and go and have a proper pint of Yorkshire Ale. Over beer would be great. I'd love that. And um, I'd really like, um, with your permission, maybe come, come back in six, 12 months and just you know review where you've, you know, all the achievements you've had then. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. That, that, that would be wonderful. So thank you, so, thank you so much. It's been really fascinating and enjoyable. And uh, I absolutely wish you and your team all the best success in the future. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to us and, and have a great Christmas. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thanks, John. See ya. Bye. Thanks for watching. What was your takeaway from today's interview? Please post it in the comments below. 
and subscribe for all our upcoming videos or click for the next video here.